In this episode, Tamara speaks with renowned commercial photographer, Joel Grimes, about great topics such as how he creates his unique work. Adorama TV presents The Redefined Show with Tamara Lackey, where she talks with creatives who make it all work, bringing their best creative and business tips to you, along with fresh ideas and equipment favorites. Joel. Hello, Tamara. How are you? I'm doing excellent. Thank you for taking the time to sit down with us. Well, thank you for having me here. I have a question. Yes. You've been a photographer for 26 years? Or more than that now. And since this is going to be like a 10, 12 minute show, sum up. What have you learned? Go. In 27 years? Go. Well, first of all, uh, the best photographers don't make the best income. Ah. It's the ones that have the fortitude to stick with it, uh, market, mm -hmm. never give up, overcome the fear of rejection, and stick with a theme of, you know, like a branding and, yeah. and hit the market. I can't, I can't believe you had an answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> That's impressive. So you think it's the stick with itness that well, really takes you over the, into the success category? Think about it. If you spent 26, seven years playing the guitar, you think you'd be pretty good? Yes. All right. So it's just a matter of, of never giving up, uh, following uh, the current uh, trends, the tools at hand, and I do about 60 self-assignments a year. Nobody's paying me. 60? 60. I try to do at least one a week and sometimes more. And I'm bringing someone in the studio. I'm learning. I'm taking tools. I see an idea. Wow. I follow up on that. And that's how I build my portfolio. Like, what's an example of a, of a, of a normal, if there is one, self-assignment? Well, last Sunday, I shot uh, a SWAT guy. Came in, and it's now on my uh, website, the shot we did. So you... There was no commission to do this? No. Nope. You just said, I want to do this? Well, it was through, through someone. I had been wanting to do some SWAT-type looking characters, mm -hmm. you know, all decked out. And this person had this, you know, contact, blah, blah, blah. And the next thing I know, I'm, he's in my studio. So you, do you call him or, or the, the contact? And you just say, hey, I just want to photograph you. I have no end game here. Well, It'd I... just be interesting. Here's what I say. I want to do a portfolio shot. Um, and that, that will look like a movie poster, hopefully. Uh-huh. And you get a copy of it. You know, and so that's kind of how I do it. Yeah, but that's interesting because you would think, given how well known you are and how successful you've been, the fact that you don't, you're not really thinking about, okay, who's paying me to do this? I just want to go out and do this because I'm interested. Right. Um, that's a lot of passion to uphold for that long. Well, I've learned that, it, it realistically, um, a client shot is probably not going to end, end up as a portfolio shot. Hmm. It's just the way it is. I mean, I had the. A shot this last week that you know by the time I got done with it it's not really my picture and so uh, I want a picture that represents me as an artist yep. and where um, you know where I'm going and the ideas I get I want to ex execute those and think about this if I have an idea for a SWAT guy okay and he yep. comes in I shoot him and I get this amazing picture but if I was doing it for an ad campaign it'd have to be uh, you, all compromise, these little compromise. things come into play. Mm -hmm. this, that's not the right gun to use. That's not the right, you know, whatever gear. And it would be, it, you know, they might actually, sometimes it does end up going down a path that you go, wow, I never thought of that. Yeah. But most of the time it ends up with a picture that I don't want to put in my portfolio. Right. And I think that's very interesting because it's, uh, especially with just simply shooting portraits, you find a lot of times there's frustrations between what the client wants and what they buy and what they hired you for. And, yep. and would you identify more as, because uh, our mutual friend, Matt Kluskowski, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, when I asked him about you before the interview, oh, great. Um, he said that he would put you first as a master behind the camera, but very close second as a master at lighting. Well. I put a lot of stock in how light falls upon a face or a subject. And I've done that even back before I was doing three lights or multiple light setup. Mm -hmm. I call the three light edgy look. Uh, I was doing cross light Rembrandt, you right. know, and, I, and how that Rembrandt tri triangle ended up on the face was really important to me. So I spend a lot of time fine tuning my light. In fact, um, I've had people that have been in the industry for years that have been shooting. When they watch me shoot, they go, you move a light three inches, what's three inches gonna do? Well, to me, it does something. And so that's how I fine tune uh, my lighting. But it's really in the last five years that I've taken my lighting to a whole new level. I mean, I'll in the last sit, five years? Last five years. Okay, six, why? Maybe six years. Well, because I got tired of the, the one cross light You're look. You're bored. And, and the, well, and part of it is I got a lot of attention for my portraits, and then all of a sudden, 
things, the industry kind of changed a little bit in the advertising. And I just thought, you know, it's time to reinvent myself. And mm -hmm. I think really you have to reinvent yourself about every seven to 10 years. You have to be Madonna. Yeah, you know, yeah. And, she, and yeah. that's why she's what yeah. she is. And um, like 30 years famous? Yes. That, yeah. It's a hard thing to keep it going. And I know a good percentage of my, you know, I say colleagues, friends that are my age that I've been rubbing elbows with for, you know, 25 years, mm -hmm. and they are dying because they don't see the need to reinvent. So we talked a little bit earlier about the creative process. Um, why is that so important to you? Well, you can get all, you can have all the techniques, all the tools, uh, whatever is at hand, yeah. and produce a really boring picture. Yes. Right? <laughs> yes. So, so, and, and so we- And you've seen that a lot. Like we, there's, yeah. this leaves me with nothing, yeah. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. So what separates us, okay? What hasn't changed in the last 100 years of taking pictures? The creative process. Mm -hmm. The tools have changed. What happens is we get caught up on the tools. Right. And so we say when the film went to, you know, to digital. Right. Oh, uproar. JPEG raw. Yeah, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in the end, it's me as an artist expressing myself through the tools. Yeah. And I make a statement. Hopefully that represents what I love. And then people respond to it. Not everyone's going to love what I do. And the good news is I don't have to worry about that. If I was worried about everyone loving what I do, then I would become undone every day because someone's going <laughs> to come along and say, right. I don't like what you do. Right. Or sometimes they do it to poke and say, you know, because you're doing well or something, they want to put you down. Right. But the fact is that it's going to come. In fact, I have my whole talk. I talk about that. It's a hundred percent guarantee that we enter the real world. We're going to be rejected in some form and it hurts. Mm -hmm. But we have to recognize that. No, you know what? I don't have to please everyone. And um, I have a passion for what I do. I'm an artist and I have this way of creating and I put it out there and I don't mind someone saying, Hey, you know what? You should maybe try this. And I go, Oh yeah, I never thought of that. But ultimately I try to follow my intuition, my passion as an artist, and then I stand out. Um, does that, when you say it hurts, does it still hurt? Well, you have to recognize, and I say this and I, you know, that every human being to some degree is weak, fragile, and secure. That's just who we are as humans. Mm -hmm. Some of us are a little tougher, maybe we put a facade on, but if someone comes along, and I say this, if you have, you put an image on Flickr and you get praise, 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 you get 100 praises, or 99 praises, I say. Right. And then someone comes along and makes a critique and it really kind of stabs at you. Yeah. When you go to bed, what do you think about? <laughs> the critique. Yeah. Right. So 99 praises doesn't outweigh the critique? No, because we're weak, fragile, and secure. So what I have to do is when that one critique comes along is go, you know what? That's life. We've come to the flash round. All right. Are you excited? I, I'm not sure exactly what I'm into, but let's do it. All right. I'm going to ask you a, a series of rapid fire questions. Okay. And you, the whole point is you can't really think. Wow. Like just go, <laughs> just go. It's going to be high pressure. Oh, okay. All right. Look at, look at that. See how he looks off camera to his I, wife. I am a support. little nervous now. <laughs> Baby, uh, hold me. Okay. So the beads of sweat are starting to come. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. You ready? All right. Canon, Nikon, Sony, Pentax. Canon. I see, that was easy. Tripod, monopod, sometimes none or neither. Always tripod. Always. Yes. Huh. Never handheld. Huh. Okay, I'll go back to that in a second. Favorite flash? Uh, Just one favorite. Einstein. Einstein. Softbox or umbrellas? Uh, softbox. Always? No. But favorite? Yeah. Spaghettios or lasagna? Spaghetti. <laughs> Spaghettios. Oh, no. Spaghetti. Oh, you said Spaghettios? Lasagna. Ah, change your answer. <laughs> you have no idea what you're going to walk into. Mystery assignment. You've got one camera, one lens. Which one is it? I mean, you don't know what you're shooting, the distance, anything. 24 millimeter. 24 prime. Uh, I don't really own a 24 prime. I have a 24 tilt shift. I use it kind of like a, uh, it's very, very sharp, but I love 24 millimeter. Almost all my portraits of my athletes are shot around 24 millimeter. Huh. All right. You get to grab two more. Two more what? Lenses? lenses? Which are they? Um, I have a 17 tilt shift that I love for my backgrounds. Yes. And then I have my 24 to so 105 that I use sort of my zoom, you know, it's the Canon zoom. Okay. You can bring everything. What else would you bring in a shoot or is that it? Um, I, you know, I have a hundred macro I use on occasion. It's amazingly sharp. It's the, you know, the Canon, but I have a 7200 that I use maybe once a year. Strobes are constant. Always strobe. Always strobe. I always mix strobe with the, the, the you know available light or whatever. All right, let's break this down a little bit. Okay. So tripod everything. You always get a sharper image on a tripod. That's the way optics work. Yeah. You handhold, it's going to be softer than you put on a tripod. 
And that's just the way it is, okay? That's from- That's just the way it is. Photo, photo 101, that's what I was taught. Yes. Okay? I've proven it a hundred times to my assistants. They you go, have a feeling about this. Well, because yeah. you know, I want to get the best I right. can out of my optics. And especially in the corners, you're gonna see it break down really fast. Okay. Okay, so um, uh, even you see, unless I'm doing a teaching such a scenario, I never handhold my camera. Most gleeful moment of your career. Gleeful. Yep, not most successful in anything. Just the moment you were like, Neh. you know, I went to Point. Well, I was at Point Lobos near Carmel. Okay. And I was photographing these rock formations on the beach. You know, it's where Edward Weston did his famous rock formation port, uh, uh, pictures back with his eight by ten camera. You know, probably on a tripod. So Ed Edward Weston, Ad Ansel Adams, those, remember those little guys? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it was like I'd never been there before, and I'd read about it, and you know, sort of. You know, wanted to go there, mm -hmm. and it was like I was there, and it was like, wow, this is where Edward That's Weston did it. Yeah. And what I was thinking was, I hadn't really looked at his pictures in years, and I went back to the hotel that night and looked, and I thought, you know what, my pictures are better. <laughs> <laughs> but we have all these tools yeah. today yeah. that we can HDR. We, I, and I'm doing, I'm taking a tilt shift lens, a 17 tilt shift, mm -hmm. and I'm actually shooting multiple frames in that tilt shift, which give me a bigger megapixel. Right. But I'm actually using what would probably be like, I mean, super wide. And he didn't have those lenses. No. So. It's, it's actually stunning to relook at that work given what we knew about the technology then. Exactly. Well, so what kind of workshops, how often do you run workshops? When are the next few ones coming up? How can people find out more? Well, um, I have all these events. I think this year I had over 40 events that I've been But Jeebus. Oh, it's crazy. My personal workshops I love, they're in my studio in Pasadena. We keep it to 12 people. Mm -hmm. And um, there's nothing, nothing on the books right now, but just finished a couple. Um, but I love the two, a two day, it's a two day event. And we bring all these models in and it's really fun. I have on my blog, joelgrimesworkshops.com, okay. I have all sorts of information about what I'm doing behind the scenes and stuff. A lot of videos behind the scenes. Uh, and then I have some tutorials that I sell there. And so it goes through all my whole process from pretty much st st uh, start to finish. And then, and I remember reading that in your bio that you said that that's one of the things that you really love doing is sharing that information and now video tutorials as well. You know what's, you know what's really amazing? Most photographers, at least when I grew up, um, they were very guarded. They, yes. would, they would say, you'd ask them, how'd you do that? And they go, mm, mum's the word, right? Mm -hmm. And I've never been like that, but when, about five years ago, um, I sat down and said, you know what? If I share what I do, I mean, to the T, no secrets. Right. In the end, that makes me a better photographer because I'm all, I now have to always be one step ahead of what I'm sharing. Ultimately, even if I could share everything and zap somebody with it, all the technical information I have. Yeah, like Keanu Reeves style? They're not me. Yeah, yeah. exactly. They're not me. I'm not them. Right. So nobody really can steal my creative vision. That's true. So there's no threat. Even five years ago, when the advertising agencies started going, you know, it was really tough times. Yeah. Um, I that's that's when I reinvented the look that I have today. Ah. So it came. It was birthed out of that. Like all of a sudden, the phone stopped ringing. Right. And look where I'm at today. Had I not had that slow time, I guarantee you, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. I wouldn't right. be sitting here talking to you. I'm sure. Well, it's interesting because that exact same mentality is the same for relationships. When you start coasting. You know, and not yeah, working on things. That's true. And, and oftentimes when people are having kind of the roughest patches is where they find something new. You're saying that because my wife's sitting over She's there? She's sitting right there. Yeah. And I know how much you love her. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna get a lecture later, right? <laughs> you are working <laughs> on the passion of your marriage, aren't you? Yes, of course. <laughs> of course, baby. Um, Tw so 25 years next week. That yeah. is actually amazing. It is. Uh, your wife, speaking of Amy, was telling me that you're a stripper? <laughs> <laughs> well, the term strip, is yeah. another term for knocking out, and I'm sort of, the, I guess, the master of compositing, and so, yeah, I'm, you're I'm, stripping. I'm stripping. You're I'm stripping, stripping every, every, every day. And on that note, if people want to learn more about you and your stripping, uh, they go to joelgrimes.com. Yeah, that's my website, or Joel Grimes Workshops. And what about social media? Uh, you'll have to ask my wife on that. I don't know. <laughs> you don't my... even know your account, Liz? No. Yes, you do. No, what is it, hon? <laughs> Joel Grimes Photos. Joel Grimes photo, photo is my Twitter. Okay, which you obviously are handling. Yes. And on that note, <laughs> have a wonderful anniversary and thank you so much for joining Thanks us. Thanks for having me come here.
All right. Hi, Joel. Hello. <laughs> no, <I'm just> kidding. <laughs> All right. Hello, Joel. Well, hello. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to get past this. Do you know Kevin Kavoda? Uh, I've seen his videos. We did the hello 46 yes. times. Uh -huh. Like, and, and, and when, like, he got in a big giggle fit. Like, he couldn't get past hello. And I'm like, dude, we'll never finish this. Adorama TV is brought to you by Adorama, your best source for the equipment and knowledge you need. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. Place your order by 7 p.m. and it ships the same day. Plus, the next time you're in New York City, be sure to visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Check out the Adorama Rental Company for professional cameras, lighting, computers, and more. We'll help you make the best selection to match your needs while giving you the knowledge to achieve the best outcome from your rental. Adorama is your complete solution for equipment, printing, training, and more. Adorama, more than a camera store.